Always look for food with a board B quality mark, so you can relax and enjoy it more. Sheep farming in Ireland is very much a family business. There are more than 34,000 sheep farmers here, and with an average flock size of just 108, it means that the farmers can give close attention to their flocks all year round. I'm in County Waterford to meet Willie Drahan. Willie. Hello. You're busy at work. How are you going, yeah? Well, this is my first time here in the Cumber Mountains. Give me a sense of where we are exactly in Ireland. Mid County Waterford, a place called Corraheen Rack Almock. You're about 10 miles from Clamell. About 20 miles from Dungavon. Come a mountain here in the background. Out over the mountain, you have Nile Valley. It's beautiful. It's Absolutely cool. beautiful. Now, you and your brother-in-law started up a group of cooperative farmers to rear these beautiful lamb. Tell me about it. Back in 2008, we started Come a Mountain Lamb. We felt, I suppose, our lamb was being last going to the bigger meat factories and felt that we had something special when you look around you here and see what we have in the mountains. And we approached Michael Queen first and Michael took our uh, first two lambs from us and it started from there. Well, he's a chef I had on my programme many years ago yeah. when he was in Waterford Castle and he broke down the full lamb. He, he's a fantastic chef. A good but guy, yeah. what benefit is there to being in a group of farmers? Well, so what's the benefit for us in Cumber Mountain Lamb is that we have a constant supply. We know exactly where our lamb is coming from. The guys are in it are producing it in the way that the consumer and the customer that we want to produce. And how many farmers are in it now? There's eight. So it's not too big at the same time. No, it's, it's very not. controllable. It's controllable, it's yeah. Which, and where do you sell your lamb? We'll sell it locally, first in our own county, in Arkeen stores, Super Value, local restaurants. And then we move on from that on to, say, Wexford, Kilkenny, Carlow, and on into Dublin. The breed are Scotch Blackface. The Scotch Blackface have been in the Cumbers since the 1740s, 1750s. At that time, it was English landlords owned this place. They were brought in from Scotland, they were seen to be a hardy, healthy breed that could live on the mountains for most of the year. The diet in the mountain gives it a sweet flavour. The lamb is there for about five months of its life. The yews are there for nine months of the year. That all influences on the meat. And you're going for the PGI status, tell me about that. Two and a half years ago I started myself to, to do it, but look, there's a lot of work in it. So we got a local guy to help us, Michael Brown, and now we have been approved and has gone for approval to the EU Commission. So fingers crossed, what will that give you? It'll give us a bit of protection, number one, that our lamb is from here. If someone wants to sell lamb from the Cumber Mountains, that it can be sold under Cumber Mountain lamb. And it gives the consumer, I suppose, more approval that this lamb is from where it says. And the diet and the way we do our lambs, it has a EU approval got for that. Well, you couldn't get a more natural environment for the lamb if you look at it here. It's just spectacular. One of the things I do like about farming up here is that when you look at other aspects of farming, that it has changed so much with modern methods, be the lowland with fertiliser, land reclamation, maybe sprays and pesticides used, but in the mountains, they haven't been touched since the beginning of time, I suppose. They're the same way when I was five years old as they are today and generations before that. Now, Beautiful. do you like to eat lamb? I do. What way do you like? A uh, shoulder lamb, I suppose, is probably the most favourite one. You can put a shoulder lamb on for three and a half, four hours. Well, I think lamb, I think, is coming to show people how to cook it too. Yeah. As you said, the shoulder of lamb, like using all those good value cuts. Yeah. Everyone wants the rack and the yeah. line, of course, don't yeah. they? Yeah, the correct, yeah. yeah. So it's all about education. It so. is, yeah, and if you can get, you know, the shoulders, cheaper cut. Well, and we'll feed the family, no problem. Absolutely, and good value too at yeah, the same time, I think so. Well, good. I'm going to head up to Dublin, and John Weir, a good chef in Forest Avenue, is going to do your lamb some justice, I think. Willie, thank you so much. It's lovely to see you here, and continued success. Yeah, thanks, Evan. Thanks very much. John Weir is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting chefs in Ireland. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he cooks the lamb from Willie's Farm. John, thank you for having me in your kitchen. It's nice to see you, Evan. Thank you. Very excited to be back in Forest Avenue. So this is the lamb here. So this is a Comera Mountain lamb, six month old animal. I will start down here. Okay. And we just. 
you just taken so, off. Yeah, the legs. So these we're going to hang now for an extra 10 days. Breaks down the fibres a little bit, yielding a much softer, more tender meat onto the shoulder. Right up here. Just yeah. Going. You're a fit man, John. <laughs> and getting fitter, yes, yeah, since... Uh, <laughs> shoulder and neck and uh, front shank. I'll leave for now and tomorrow I will just take parts of it off the bone. The neck I'm going to leave on the bone. I'll just leave that there. So this is the shoulder here? Yeah, so that's the entire shoulder. This is the neck left on the bone, been marinated. This is the shoulder itself, which I've taken off the bone. It's been salted for 24 hours and then I get a, uh, a dry rub on it. There's some roasted garlic, sunflower oil, ground cumin, ground coriander massaged into the, wow. uh, into the you neck. You see, lamb is great. It takes on so many beautiful flavours. Yeah. We will roll up mm -hmm. and I will tie it, roast in the oven. Low Roasted. temperature, it's about 10 hours at, 10 uh, hours. at 100 degrees. The prime cuts left, so you've got a saddle here and rack. Mm -hmm. So um, we will... The saw is bite, isn't it? Yeah. OK. So there's a lot of fat in here. Did you use the fat for anything? Yeah, we roast in the oven. Mm -hmm. And um, it renders out in the oven. We use the fat then for, for cooking potatoes, making vinaigrettes. We use it as a flavour enhancer. I love all these cuts, you know, the belly the shoulder, the neck. Here at the restaurant, we don't consider any cut better than another. We consider the shoulder equally as good as the belly. There are the fillets there. They're so lean, aren't they? Yeah. This just needs to be browned off in a pan, allowed to rest for a minute, and there you've got a you know, beautiful... Melt in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that requires very little work. So you've got a bit of the belly here and some of the saddle, our best end. And this we take off the bone. So that'll be the loin there. Yeah. And do you find lamb very popular here in Forest Avenue? Yeah. Well, we have a tasting menu here at Forest Avenue, so it's a no-choice tasting menu, part of the belly. So you'll find some people, they come in and they think that they're not that fond of lamb, and then we give them this and they fall in love with it. So what do you do with all the lamb bones? I'll roast the bones off and we'll make a lamb sauce. I'll just finish with the rack, so I'll take uh, this part of the belly. Yeah. Cooked, uh, thank you. Lovely. So that's a part of the belly on the bone. Cooked pretty much the same way as the shoulders. It'll be salted for 24 hours, washed, marinated, and then wrapped up and slowly cooked in the oven. Slow, slow roasted. So you seem to like to slow roast them. You're getting a beautiful caramelization on the meat that you don't get through braising or through bathing. And I find that the meat just develops way more complexity of flavor. Just trim the rack, leaving it on the bone, but just separating. So that's our rack of lamb. Left it on the rib bone so we can serve a nice uh, lamb chop on the bone. We will trim it up eventually. We'll take the fat off here and just French trim the rack ready for service. So we're ready to get cooking now? Yes, exactly. Fantastic. I'll give you a hand tidy up. Thank you. Later in the programme, I'll be back in John's kitchen. But next, I want to go back to County Waterford to learn about a very unique product. Barron's Bakery in Capaquin has been making the famous Waterford Bla since 1887. Esther, you're a fourth generation baker. That's correct, um, Nevin. I am fifth generation of Barron clan in Capaquin, but fourth in the bakery business. And tell me about the history of the bakery here. It's amazing that this bakery has survived in a small town in Capaquin over two world wars, the Civil War, and many recessions. And it's all due to local support. And you've been working here all your life, have you? I have, yes. I inherited the bakery from my father in 1980, and I continued that um, until 93 when my husband joined me. But Esther, since you've worked in the bakery, you must have seen some amazing changes within products, within variety. Like, look at the range there behind you. What are people looking for? Well, they love tradition, and we're a traditional bakery, and we do a lot of the soda breads, you know, like you have the spotted dog and the brown bread, which is unique to Ireland, those soda breads and the scones. We do butter loaves and seed loaves. Yeah, we chan. do Chester cake and we do gingerbread. Of course, we have our signature bread, which I have one here for you to see. This is called uh, plain loaves. It can be called turnover. It can be called grinder, and it's the equivalent of six large pan loaves. And within Ireland, I mean, there's very few bakeries still producing this kind of bread. There's a lot of hand it's, molding. It's, molding. Mm. It's, a lot of it's not of back and it's yes. a very slow process oh. to produce this. Some people call it pull apart bread because you can break it off in 400 gram pieces. That would be what our core business would be, the traditional um, flavours and they're all childhood memories. Uh, the blah is what I'm interested in. How do you make this? 
Well, the blah is made with um, flour and yeast, and it was always the leftover pieces of dough. Okay. And the baker would bake them off and put lots of flour on them, and they'd put them into the oven. It would be the final heat of the oven that would bake them because they're so small. You don't need a dense heat for them. They were always less expensive than anything else. They were great for big families. It was a tradition that you got up in the morning and you went out to the bakers to get your, your blah for breakfast. So the blah is very unique to Waterford County. You have got PGI status for them. So, Joe, tell me about that. The PGI, it means Protected Geographical Indication. It's an EU trademark. It recognises a traditional food made in the same area for a long period of time. There are four others in the country. You have uh, Clare Island Salmon, Connemara Hill Lamb, Immokili Cheese and Timberley Brown Pudding. So uh, there are three more in, in the process of getting there. Our neighbours, Cumra Lamb, they're just down the road. Uh, Wexford uh, um, black curtains and Sneem black pudding. Fantastic achievement for the whole county and for yourselves too. You think of France, Champagne, in Italy they have the Parmesan Reggiano, the Parma ham. I mean, it, there's what to have only four or five products in Ireland have this. It's, it's an absolute brilliant, well done. This is a very traditional bakery but you're big into innovation. Well that's right. One of the biggest things that we did was um, uh, went in to do the Dungarvan Farmers Market and also we have brought in tours of the bakery and we do them once a week and people People are amazed at what goes on in this small little premises behind the closed doors at night. What does go on in the bakery during the night? First of all, the dough is made. A simple mixture of flour, yeast, salt and water. Once the dough has been mixed together and kneaded thoroughly, it's divided and cut into equally sized pieces. Covered to prevent the skin from forming and left to rise for 10 minutes. The dough is then knocked back and taken to the bun divider, which cuts out 30 pieces of dough. These are placed on a tray, dusted with flour, covered and left to prove for another 30 minutes. The blahs are knocked back again and left to rise for a further 30 minutes before being baked in the ovens, which were originally built in Scotland in 1880. The bacon is the quickest part. The exact time depends on the time of the year, the moisture in the flour and the many other variations that only an experienced baker can determine. The Waterford Blah is one of only five products in Ireland that have been awarded the coveted Protected Geographical Indication status by the European Union and that's some achievement. Always look for food with a board B quality mark so you can relax and enjoy it more.